So, you guys might have a little bit of an inkling as to what specialization is by now, well at least I hope you do, but essentially we're dedicating a training cycle to a very specific objective, and we're narrowing the bandwidth of fitness targets, which can allow for rapid enhancement of the targeted qualities or goals that you are training for. So for hypertrophy, which is muscle growth, specialization means focusing on and prioritizing certain muscle groups over others, instead of always training to build muscle across your entire body at the same rate at the same time. And this allows for accelerated growth of the muscle groups that are being prioritized, and non-prioritized muscle groups can be put on the back burner, so to speak, where you get a little bit less growth, and sometimes you might even just maintain the amount of muscle that you have. And this can be really, really useful for uh, not only bodybuilders or people who have physique-oriented goals, but also for athletes uh, such as powerlifters who uh, might need to, for example, build up their quads, but they can't build their lower back and glutes and hamstrings all at the same time, so they might need to specialize, build up the quads to improve their squat one at max. So why would we specialize? Well, obviously we can emphasize and grow certain muscle groups that you wish to be bigger at a faster rate. And whether that's because of urgency or preference or the developmental needs that you have as it relates to your long-term goals. So you might wanna get bigger arms before beach season, or you might need to get bigger lats for your physique show. And for whatever reason, you might wanna specialize. And it allows you also to de-emphasize and not grow or grow at a slow rate the muscle groups you don't urgently wish to be bigger, as I mentioned earlier. So if you don't want quads to grow anymore and you're pretty happy with the size that they are, you don't need to necessarily train quads. And you can slow down growth of stronger muscle groups so that your lagging muscle groups can come uh, catch up, and that's very useful also. And as we spoke about previously, when I mentioned some of the stress models, the body pulls on a finite pool of resources to go towards recovery from stresses. So if we bring down our training demands for one body part, that frees up some of those resources to go towards the priority muscle groups that we wish to grow at this present time. Uh, and that's very, very useful, and I think a very clever way to spend some of your adaptive currency. So when should you specialize? Well, beginners can specialize, anybody can specialize really, but beginners will grow well with any half decent program, and they can grow all muscle groups relatively well at the same time with a balanced training protocol. They don't necessarily need to specialize, but if you have a beginner who doesn't want to build bigger quads, or they want is a booty and delts, then you can definitely specialize and target only those muscle groups. Intermediates are a little bit more tricky because they can still grow pretty well with a very general balanced program, but if there's developmental needs start to require them to focus more heavily on one muscle group, whether it's their delts are lagging and the reason that they're not placing on the podium in a bodybuilding show or potentially the bench press is really weak and they need to build bigger triceps and pecs in order to improve their total if they're powerlifting, um, those things are gonna dictate whether or not they need to specialize and you start to get a better handle of the developmental needs for intermediates in most cases. And if growing some muscle groups is desired, then there's no reason why an intermediate can't start to prioritize those muscle groups. And as I said, they can usually grow with a pretty well-balanced program. But advanced lifters are generally going to need to start to specialize because in order to adapt and progress at a meaningful and observable rate, they can't be chasing multiple different uh, body parts to grow at the same time because they're getting closer to their genetic ceiling uh, and they're not going to have the ability to grow everything all at once. So it's a really good time as an advanced lifter to have a little bit more specificity in each of your training blocks and really focus on building muscle in one or two body parts at a time so that you can make sure that they are growing and then you're not just spinning your wheels. So one of the things that a lot of people always talk about when discussing specialization cycles is training volume. And for sure, training volume is one of the primary variables that changes during specialization cycles. And as I mentioned, volume is just the dose of the stress. And we're simply going to increase the dose in a specialization cycle because we have that adaptive currency uh, and resources freed up so we can recover from a little bit more and therefore dedicate more volume from reductions in volume for other body parts to our priority muscle groups. And again, we measure volume in number of hard sets, so RPE over six, not just a set where you're fluffing about or warm-up sets, so they're hard working sets uh, per week per muscle group. And we also look at volume load. So that is uh, not just how many sets we're doing, but also the sets times the reps times the weight lifted. 
and more volume, provided we meet those sufficient uh, sufficient intensity thresholds, will lead to more growth to a point. Just remember back to that tension stimulus curve that I showed you. We have a minimum effective dose, a maximal adaptive dose, and a maladaptive dose. So we want to find that sweet spot within our programs when we're specializing. And as I said earlier, the research has shown that training volume has a nonlinear inverted U-shaped dose response relationship with hypertrophy. So volume is a very important variable. And the research suggests that the optimal volume, as I mentioned earlier, is gonna be six to eight sets per session and anywhere from 16 to 24 sets per week over a frequency of two to three sessions. But again, everybody's needs are gonna be individualized which is why we do need to consider when we're adjusting training volumes, even though it's for a specialization cycle and we might have that uh, freed up adaptive resources, not everybody's going to be able to just keep increasing volume. So we need to be very diligent and careful when we do increase volume. So you need to consider the individual's needs and context. And this includes things like their schedule, their volume tolerance, their recovery ability, how much time they have to train, very pragmatic stuff, the importance of achieving maximal hypertrophy for them. And if this specialization cycle is really important, then that's obviously good to know. Uh, and also injury history. And a really cool way to think about training volume is that we have maximal gains in the middle of the curve there. We have volume on the x-axis and hypertrophy and the growth response on the y-axis. And obviously, uh, you know, towards that green maximal gain sweet spot is where we're gonna get the best possible results. Now, sometimes people will get better gains, so shifting that maximal gain sweet spot to the left with less volume if they train closer to failure and they have adequate rest between the sets and they have very standardized technique. Sometimes people will need more volume to get those best gains if they're training further from failure, so they're not getting uh, to those low RIRs or high RPEs. They're not resting long enough, so they might be resting between you know 45 to 90 seconds, and they're still got a little bit of central fatigue or cardiometabolic fatigue that's impairing their performance from set to set. Oh, they're training with poor technique, so they're getting less stimulus per rep on the target muscle group. And sometimes people will get even more gains with the same volume if they have an energy surplus, good sleep, quality, and duration, and low psychological stress, all things we spoke about earlier. And sometimes we get less gains with the same volumes if they have an energy deficit, poor sleep, quality, and duration, and high psychological stress. And credit goes to Will Berkman for this uh, slide here because he came up with this and I really, really liked it. So I want to share that with you guys because I think it helps show you guys that although we want to adjust volume in a specialization cycle, we don't always need to adjust volume independently of everything else that's going to the program. We must consider the things that we just spoke about. So how close someone's trained to failure, how long they're resting, the standardized technique, uh, whether they've got an energy surplus or deficit, their sleep quality and duration, as well as psychological stress. These are all things that you should be considering when you're designing a specialization phase. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Unfortunately, this is all we have time for today. This was a small snippet from a specialization cycle lecture from our uh, just released hypertrophy summit if you want to know more about the summit see the link in the description and stay tuned for next week's video